Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. All right, let me get comfortable. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Let me see who was first. Uh, Nessie Medeiros, thank you so much for being first. Uh, is that uh, Portuguese? I think that's spelled in a Portuguese way. But anyway, thank you very much. Um, Lorna William, thank you so much. Happy Easter, everyone. Um, hmm. Okay. Happy Resurrection Sunday, family. Hello and welcome to the live chat. Please like, share, subscribe, and join the membership if you are able. Absolutely. If you are able, that would be fantastic. Hello, uh, Mercedes Keys. Uh, no BD. Melanated black uh, vitriol anger <laughs> scream. <laughs> oh, oh, well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, let me see here. Okay, I'll just say hi as I go along. Oh, uh, H. Knight says, Happy Easter, everyone. H. Knight, thank you so much for 23 months membership. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Church Nelly, happy Easter. Susie Q. Oh, very good. And... Uh, Oh, yeah. Happy Easter, Jerry White. I know you're listening. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, let's get on with it. I figured I would surprise you guys and have my slides ready. So there they are. Uh, happy Easter, Prince Harry and, and Princess Meghan, uh, King Charles III and Camilla, the consort, cohort, and the latest Kate Middleton. And you know what, guys? Um, I hate to start off uh, with a conspiracy theory, so I'll just get to it later. No, I'm just, where are the kids? How come we haven't seen the kids since Christmas Day? You know, I was just thinking about that. Okay, so the kids were not there today, right? But yesterday, when I showed you uh, this, that was from last year, right? And the kids were there. All the kids were there. I don't know that I saw the Tyndall kids either. But, oh, and um, Lady Louisa wasn't there. Y'all know how much I care about that overindulged, privileged family. You know what I mean? I care about those people. Um, so, anyway. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Lori, those conspiracy theories. What would life be without those? So, okay. Uh, have a light, Queen. Uh, Blue Draws, C Mac, Janice Goodrich. Okay, let's get on with it then. Well, what would uh, Easter be without flowers? Wasn't there a song? Um, and if I could write a sonnet about my Easter bonnet. No, about your Easter bonnet. Uh, yeah, there was a movie called Easter Parade, I think. Yeah, I think there was a movie called The Easter Parade. Okay. Getting on with it then. So, um, of course, nothing like a beautiful Easter watercolor. Um Nothing like a beautiful Easter watercolor. I love those. It just screams happy Easter, doesn't it? It really does. And you know, if you guys are like need some, if you want a stress reducer, get yourself a watercolor kit. 
Um, there, there's so, I mean, it's just, I haven't done it in years, but watercolor is so easy. It doesn't stain anything. And um, even if you get yourself a paint, uh, paint by number set or something like that, it is so relaxing. Just think about it. But if you're good at sketching, you can sketch out something and do the watercolor yourself. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh, what was his name? Um, okay, okay. I just thought of something I needed. Just thought of something I needed. Huh. And there it is. Came up right away. Love it. I just could not remember that last name. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, that's not bad. I kind of like that one, too. Huh. Oh, that is cool. That looks very modern. I'll show it to you guys later. It looks very modern, though. That is a great, great photo. I'm going to save that one and maybe talk about it another time. I love old photos uh, that feature um, African Americans. I love that. Those old vintage photos featuring African Americans. I get such a kick out of that. One of my favorite things of all time is just seeing those old photos. Some from the family, some are not, but I, I really do enjoy those. Okay. All right, so let's get on with it. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of like um, reminiscing and thinking about fun times. <laughs> Church Nelly. Church Nelly is Easter Sunday. <laughs> it's Easter Sunday. Oh, man. I thought I was bad. Well, you know what? Stick around. I, I do have a few things. We understand each other. Uh, happy Easter. I just love rabbits at, each, at Easter time. They say it has something to do with fertility, something that was passed down from the pagans, but I don't care. It says spring. It says a lot of things. And I tell you, whenever you hear something like, oh, you know, that was something that was passed down from the pagans. Well, when the pagans were conquered, one of the ways that the Romans were able to subjugate them, to colonize them, was to make their holidays their own. And by the time uh, Christianity spread throughout uh, Europe, they just continued to... Um, I guess, make those connections and um, help people identify with a more Christian side of things. So you got to admit, that was pretty clever of the early um, conquerors. Um, I tell you, I don't know how they could think of doing certain things to another human being, but wow. Wow. Okay. The pagan goddess Ishtar, hence uh, the word Easter. Lady Metatron's come on with the knowledge. Come on. Come on with that knowledge. You better come on here. Come on here with that knowledge. Thank you so much. So it's Ishtar, Ishtar that gave us Easter. Come on here. <laughs> I am super impressed. So may the renewal of life at Easter bring new blessings of love, hope, peace, good health, and happiness to you and your loved ones. Embrace the renewal of life. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Amen. You know, this is that time of year when I feel like I should be watching the Ten Commandments. Um, does that still come on at Easter? I haven't seen it at Easter uh, forever. 
But uh, that was kind of like a, a thing in our family is that we would all gather around and watch uh, Charlton Heston part the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't know he was going to become a Republican. But uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> That was very important to us. It just wasn't Easter if we didn't see Charleston Heston part the Red Sea. You know what I mean? That's what made it Easter. So, but yeah, um, if only he had stayed Democrat. I don't know that he was ever Democrat. And the last time I seen anything as theatrical as that, um, I got to say it was that day when the Queen was trying to uh, channel Charlton Heston just a bit. I thought that was pretty impressive. But uh, let me see. Do I have that? <laughs> Look at me getting messy already. Oh, and I remember this one, though. This... Uh, was uh and now I can use it properly, uh, but they put this out the other day, and that of course was the Happy Easter from um, you know the um, uh, Centibale Centibale. Okay, I'm multitasking, so that's why it's difficult for me to concentrate. I'm multitasking. Every time I start, I always think, oh, what if I do this or what if I find that? That always happens to me. But um, it makes it fun, though. It's challenging, but it makes it fun, right? I enjoy it. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't see it. Okay, no worries. I don't need it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me get back over here. And by the way, I included a forget me not for this uh uh this prayer or this Easter greeting. And that of course is the flower that Princess Diana loves so much, the forget me not. Now it's kind of becoming my favorite flower, just because. Just because of Princess Diana. So I hope everybody had a great Easter meal and uh, you had a chance to be with family. But if not, don't worry, because here at Royal Sussex, we are your family, too. Don't forget that. We are your family, too. Okay, let me go on to the next slide. And, of course, this is like one of my favorite looks for the Sussexes. Now, one of those people in the royal family decided to wear a beret today. Um, you know, and good for her. It was a little bit oversized and theatrical, but she tends to wear those larger hats for some unknown reason. She loves those big hats. And that, of course, was Ford Fiesta. I didn't bring a picture of it or anything like that. but. Ford Fiesta is good for uh, whipping out those big giant hats. And I started to say, oh, looks like she's, but you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Whether she is trying to to be our fave or, or identify with our fave or not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll let that be uh, her business. But, you know, they always do that. And I'm just like, are they coming for my fave? One thing you got to say about Megan is that she completely changed the fashion palette for that family. They were a mess before Megan showed up. And um, even though it has been a thankless job, you have to admit they are more fashion forward than they've ever been. And um, well, they lucked out having the Duchess of Sussex there. So it is, um, it's a big leap forward for that institution. That's what it is. It's a huge, huge leap forward because otherwise they have always been a disaster. Okay, moving on. 
Now, <clears throat> yesterday we had a discussion about Ford Fiesta's outfit for um, Easter. It could have been worse. She could have worn this, but she didn't. And, of course, we've seen Camilla. I don't know what it is about those women in that family trying to rock those blue jumpsuits. Uh, you know, let Gumby be Gumby. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that like a, isn't there a t-shirt that says, let Gumby be Gumby? <laughs> if there isn't a t-shirt that says, let Gumby be Gumby, there should be one. There really should. If there's any justice in this world, if there's any right in this world, there should be a t-shirt that says, let Gumby be Gumby. Darn it. <laughs> I'm trying not to cuss, um, cuss on Easter Sunday. I'm doing my best. But you know what? I'm not going to be uh, shady. I'm, I'm going to show you guys what uh, Ford Fiesta wore. It's an improvement, and, and I do believe in giving credit where credit is due. Um, give me just a second to grab that one. But yeah, I'll, I'll give her credit where credit is due. Especially since I dragged her miserably yesterday. Oh, did she get dragged yesterday? So I figure I figure I, I'll do her solid by acknowledging her um, fashion forward moment. That's what I'll do. Since I dragged her unmercifully yesterday. Let me see. Okay, so if I do that, uh, oh, Carolita Simone, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you as always for watching Royal Sussex. Okay, let me get rid of that. And I'll bring this over here. It's an improvement. It's an improvement. Baby steps, as they say, baby steps. I wonder if um, Edward had the purple lining inside of his suit. Now, come on, you guys. That's not bad. That's a good look for her. That's a good look for her. That is probably one of the best outfits. I told you the beret is a bit oversized, but um, as a matter of fact, the beret looks like it came with a white jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> The beret seems like it came with a white jumpsuit, but I'm going to give her credit. She looks good. That is one of the best looks that I've ever seen her have. It is, it, you know what? It is perfect. It's perfect. It is. It's perfect. I'm going to give her credit. It is perfect. That is, that is a tray many feet for her. I mean, just look over to your left side. And you see she's got on that blue jumpsuit looking like Skipper from Gilligan's Island. And then you take a look at that purple outfit. And that is in good taste. And Edward looks good, too. It looks like his suit is actually fitting him today somewhat. And he's got some purple details in his necktie. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to approve. I'm going to approve. I still think she's. um uh, shady, right? And, and okay, take, wait, let's take a look. Let's take a look. She does not have the turned up collar. All right. She doesn't have the turned up collar, but you see what I mean? Megan, is, well, the beret kind of bleeds into the white background, but Megan is wearing a typical beret. The one that Ford Fiesta is wearing seems a bit oversized and almost laying on top of our eye, right? So, okay. All right, you guys. Uh, if, if anybody says I was nice to her, if anybody says I was nice to her, I am going to deny it. I am going to deny, deny, deny. I'm going to say that I, um, I was going through a spell or, or something like that. Um, I overdone the NyQuil. I'm not going to admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to admit to it, but um, 
Yeah, go ahead and mark it down. It's the Easter of 2024. <laughs> I think she's still trying to rock a little bit of a Megan look. I do. I do. I still think she's trying to, to rock a little bit of uh, Megan. That's okay. For the sake of fashion, long as she's doing something right. All right, let's 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 move on with it. Now, uh, today, Charles III was out and about. He went to the St. George Chapel. King shows off strength. Um, I'm sorry, King show of strength. That's it, show of strength. And uh, over here, it says, long await. Now, where is it? Where's the caption for that? Oh, well, anyway, the caption must be too small to see. It seemed like uh, the ladies in the royal family, their theme color today was green, uh, even though Ford Fiesta wore purple. Uh, it was green for Camilla, um, uh, Princess Anne, and I forget who else. Oh, uh, Sarah Ferguson. They wore green. And here, Return of the King. Wow, that sounds biblical, doesn't it? And over here, it says Charles handshakes, uh, clear sign, he's getting better. Now, you guys, I don't know what you all think about that, but this man is uh, on chemotherapy, and he's shaking hands with the general public. And they said that he was going to sit isolated away from everyone else and yet he's in there shaking hands. That's crazy. Why are you shaking hands? Why are you shaking hands while you're going through chemotherapy, while your immune system may be compromised? You know, they say one thing, and then they do other stuff, and then they wonder why there's so many people that constantly doubt what the uh, family is saying. That is bizarre. Uh, yeah, you're right, Church Nelly. It seems like a play for sympathy. I think it was very theatrical the way that he showed up and, you know, just I think there was a bit of theater, which, of course, it is the royal family, so there's always going to be theater. Uh, but I just cannot believe this man is shaking hands with people. And the fact that Camilla is right there beside him, you would think that she would be like, you know, uh, listen, this is not a good idea. Uh, if something happens to you, William is going to have me, um, you know, sleeping under the uh, Tower Bridge. So... You know, come on, let's not do this. But no, he he did. He did. I just I I don't know. I, I thought it was a bad idea, but it's not my call. Otherwise, he looked like he's lost weight. He looks like he's lost weight. But um and also you guys do know that there is a controlled environment, uh, even though he went over and shook hands. Those people that waited outside of the church were invited. I repeat, those people that were waiting outside of the church were invited. Uh, Lorna Williams says, Chucky's doctor told me to sit, uh, told me to sit separately in the church from his family, but he was out shaking hands and no mask. Yes, and no mask, no mask. That's the other thing. Uh, let me see. He may use antibacterial lotion, and maybe he wants to stay away from fam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I always wonder if people doing these um, walkabouts, I always wonder if they're going to use antibacterial wipes. You know, do they have it in the car or, you know, do they spray their hands immediately thereafter? But still, 
You know what I'm saying? Um, one rogue brush of the eye or the nose, and you can cause yourself to get infected from someone, um, you know, but that I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Uh, okay. All right. I mean, like I said, I was just a little concerned, but moving on. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Please do not forget to hit that like button. So there they are. Camilla's wearing one of those weird little um, bolero things that she wears. Um, it seems like those are just like made only for Camilla. I've never, the only other people that you see with something like that is like a governess or, or a nanny or something like that. I mean, she literally is dressed up like, um, like a very elderly Mary Poppins. <laughs> Do you all know that Diana Ross is older than Camilla? Did you all know that Diana Ross is older than Camilla? I think Diana Ross just turned 80. Camilla is 78. Diana Ross, mahogany, uh, Supremes, uh, uh, Lady Sing the Blues. She's uh, 80 years old. She's older than Camilla. I mean, Camilla is the queen consort. You can't take that away from her. But Diana Ross is a is a is a cover model, cover girl model, or whatever it is. I forget which company. I know it's not cover girl, but you know what I'm saying? She's doing ads, beauty campaigns at 80 years old. Wow. Wow we. Yeah, 80. She's older than Camilla. And right here, uh, somebody, please come get y'all auntie. Somebody, please come get you all's auntie. Now, y'all know this don't make no sense. Here we go again. Here we go again. Somebody is doing the most. And I'm not even sure these people were invited inside of the castle. It looks like they, yeah, it looks like they are on the inside. Because I don't think there's any walls that low on the outside. So I think they are on the inside. But yeah, somebody's on T. <laughs> oh, there were more people. Uh, there were more people. But again, they were hand selected. It was not a big crowd. I, I want to say that from what I could see, I'd be surprised if it was more than 50 people. But whenever they do that walk, uh, from the castle to the chapel, there's always people that are probably screened and invited into that area, uh, just like they would do for any other occasion when they make that walk, along with the members of the press. Mm. And of course, Willie Leaks. I don't know what it is about this time of year that reminds me of William, the future king. But something about this year just reminds me of William at Easter. Yeah, William and Easter seem to go hand in hand. It also reminds me of that kid that was protesting uh, lobbing those eggs at the king. Uh, I'm sure he wasn't in the crowd. But William wasn't there. Kate wasn't there. And the children were not there. But they said that William, uh, on these holidays, he likes to catch up on his reading. There's this one book that he can't stop throwing. Uh, I mean, he can't put down. And it's called Spare by Prince William the world's fastest selling uh, nonfiction book. Yeah, spare. So that's what he's doing for his spare time. And of course, not all rabbits are for, 
shall we say, the usual uh, trip to church. Some rabbits are a little more suave. Some rabbits have a little more savoir-faire, right? But it, whatever the case may be, if it's Easter, then I think just about any rabbit is here to wish you happy Easter. So don't get it twisted. It's still Easter. But, you know, there's Bugs Bunny is, uh, you know, he's always been um, a little bit radical in the uh, giant rodent department. Rabbits are giant rodents, aren't they? The capybara, those things, all those capybaras, they just scare me because you just know they're giant rats. I do not like capybaras. I don't like to look at them or anything. Oh, by the way, you guys. There was a uh, thing that happened in Chicago today. Uh, in the Millennium Park, there was people heard something like a, a, almost like an explosion in Millennium Park. And um, anyway, uh, some people ran because, well, this happened. That uh, that sculpture, the bean. Well, actually, I think it's an egg. And, well, anyway, uh, it seems as though there was actually something inside of it. There was actually something inside of it. And I'm thinking it is a very large chick. Yeah, I think it's a very large chick. Speaking of large chicks, did you guys hear that Lizzo is quitting music? <laughs> See how I segue that? Large chicks. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, it was a very large chick that broke out of that, uh, oh, I think it was like a $25 million sculpture, and they call it the bean. And uh, yeah, so interesting, right? And just think, how many times have people walked past that not realizing what was inside of it? And you guys... There's nothing like peeps for Easter. There's nothing like peeps for Easter. Peeps are those sugary marshmallow snacks that come in multiple colors. And it's a great way to rot your children's teeth out. You want to go and get them some peeps. Now, the best way to eat the peeps is to let them sit at room temperature. Well, let them out of the package so that they kind of, you know, dry up a little bit and get a little crusty because you don't want them when they're so soft and mushy. I mean, they're fine, but if you want that little extra cr crustiness to it, then you got to have a peep and you just leave them out all day or overnight. Oh, and when you bite into them, they are delicious. But you guys... <clears throat> You guys, as we know, not everybody celebrates the, um, well, not everybody celebrates uh, Easter in the same way. You know what I mean? Amen. Not everybody. That's not it. Yes, there we go. All right, you guys, get your dollars ready. Get your dollars ready. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Make it rain. Huh. Check it out. Yes. Yes, queen. Little peep show. Huh. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, now drop it low. They doing that. They doing that.
All we need is Aunt Viv from um <laughs> from Fresh Prince. All we need is Aunt Viv from uh Fresh Prince to come and break it in. Break it down rather. Oh <laughs> yes, you have been corrupted. Those little cute peeps. Who know uh that the I'm sorry, who knew that the peeps had such a a sordid, tawdry life away from the uh, store shelves. Once they leave that store shelf, you don't know what they up to. But you guys, uh, life has taken yet another uh, interesting turn. Okay, make it rain. Get your dollars ready. Here we go. Okay, let, let me let me turn it back up again. <laughs> Okay. They doing that. Okay. <laughs> oh man right you gotta talk to the bartender So you see there, like I say, not everybody enjoys a traditional uh, Easter. Uh, some people, you know, take it to the next level. But either way, it it is uh, the peeps. They seem so innocent and so, you know, so mild mannered. But I guess everybody's got their alternative, you know, side. So you got peep shows. You got the peep ditty freak show <laughs> oh man uh, but <clears throat> during world war ii during world war ii uh another uh, thing that became a, a bit of a way of dealing with uh being in the field of battle as you can see uh these servicemen they actually wrote happy easter they were going to send some big giant eggs over to the enemy. So pretty cool, huh? And obviously this photo has been colorized, but um, very, very cool. And then, of course, oh, did I do this one twice? Yeah, I think that was a uh, second time. Happy Easter. And this is one of my favorite photos from Easter. This is why you shouldn't let those kids have too many sweets because, you know, at first their little hearts get to pound in and they get all excited and they're running back and forth and they won't stop a talking and everything. But eventually they just pass out from all the excitement. <laughs> I wonder if they were at the show. What do you think? Do you think they were at the show? Let's see. Oh, they were in the show. <laughs> what are those little tiny adults? Are those little miniature adults? <laughs> they look so young. Are those miniature adults? Gosh, I hope not. Well, no, I hope so. I hope so. Oh, well. <clears throat> and of course, now the origins of the Easter Bunny, you all say that it was a pagan thing. But if you take a look here, check it out. <laughs> 
you can see that the origins are actually uh, simply, well, it seems as though one of those orthodox uh, images, I, you know how some, sometimes the artist tries to get the shadows right? Well, this artist, he was working on his shadowing and somehow uh, created a little hand bunny. And the hand bunny, well, you know, I guess some people saw it and thought, oh, where did that come from? It's a miracle. And ever since then was born the Easter Bunny. Some tells me y'all ain't buying that one. Oh, well, it could have happened like that. It could have happened like that. Anyway, that's my version of it. That's my version. Let me see. Make sure you all hit that like button. Make sure you all hit that like button. Come on, hit that like button. And if you're here uh, to protest Royal Sussex, make sure you hit the uh, thumbs down button. But we need engagement. We need engagement. That's how we keep the lights on. So hit that like button. Um, my butt hurt. What? My butt hurts. What? <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? You're just minding your business. Um, everybody thinks you're really sweet. And next thing you know, uh, you find out that, um, that you, that you can't hear anything. Well, one of the biggest causes for chocolate Easter bunnies to lose their hearing is that somebody has actually uh, took a bite out of their ears. So I hear that Russell Myers suffer the same fate. Yes, I hear Russell Myers actually suffers from the same fate. All right, and let's keep it moving. Uh, what you doing for Easter? Watching Royal Sussex. Now, that's a good answer. That is a good answer. You wind them up and you just put them right in front of their television or their electronic device and allow them to watch Royal Sussex. <clears throat> now, uh, Richard, I'm sorry, Russell Lee, Russell Lee took this very famous photograph on the south side of Chicago. You may have seen this photo over the years and you didn't know where it comes from. Well, you know, every Easter I remind people that one of the most iconic images ever taken uh, was taken right in the city of Chicago on what today is called Martin Luther King Boulevard in the Black Metropolis. And um, it is the, um, well, I, get, I don't know if the photo has a name. It's just, uh, well, it's Easter Sunday. That, that much I know is Easter Sunday. Sunday. Uh, Lorna Williams, thank you so much for the early April Fools. Thank you very much. Uh, April Fools Day is tomorrow. Uh, you are early. <laughs> I suppose I am. I didn't think about that. Yeah, this is like one of those rare times that Easter is like the day before uh, April Fool's. And I do believe April Fool's will be Easter Day on the um, April 1st, 2029. I do believe that that is going to be April Fool's and Easter uh, Sunday all in one. Very interesting. But yes, thank you so much, Lorna Williams. And also, thank you so much for being a member of Royal Sussex. So I want you to take a look at something here. Now, uh, in Chicago, there was a theater. Um, it, I guess you could say it was kind of like the Apollo Theater, maybe. But it was called the Regal. And there's the Regal Theater there. And the photo was obviously taken not too far from that very famous theater because take a look at the building in the background there. 
You see that apartment building? Well, you could also see the apartment building here. See it? It's all the way in the down the street there. And you can see in the corner of that photo, there's that very same apartment building. Now, I think all of that is gone today. None of those buildings survive. But um, that that is a glimpse of the black metropolis as it was known in Chicago at the time. Uh, back in, I think it was 1941. I think it was 1941. Uh, yeah, it was 41 because take a look at the license plate. See there, 1941. Yeah, so the country is, uh, let me see, when did they declare war? Was it uh, December of 1941? I think it was December. So I, I guess this was pre-war, although the war was raging in Europe, right? Am I right about that? Because war was declared uh, December of 1941. I think that's right. So no wonder there's so many men around. Wow. Just think of how many of those men went to war. How many of those women may have become that trips, uh, six triple eight people or some other services during the war. A lot of these people may have gone to war. I never thought about that before. Interesting. Uh, so here's a colorized version. There are various colorized versions of that same photo. Um, I prefer the black and white. This one is kind of hideous. Um, I mean, if you're going to colorize the photo, at least do it right. This one is kind of almost cartoonish. This looks like it was in that Dick Tracy movie, right? It almost looks like it was in a Dick Tracy movie. So as far as colorizing go, this one is a disaster. I must admit it's a disaster. Uh, but yeah, so Russell Lee, part of the New Deal from Franklin Roosevelt, the New Deal also provided money for artists. And so uh, Russell Lee, a professional photographer, was given the assignment to go and photograph America. He wasn't the only one. There were others, but uh, he found himself in Chicago on Easter morning, 1941. And so thanks to him, there is a snapshot of the city of uh, black people on that day in 1941. And if you look in the back there, I want to show you something else that's a landmark. Uh, take a look on the right side. You see those towers? There's two towers. Those are actually um, spires of a church. And that is the very famous Corpus Christi Catholic School. Um, so, yeah. There you go. And take a look at how much pride and dignity we had back in the day. You don't see them going to church with bonnets and house shoes and pajama pants. This is how people traveled back in those days. Very dignified. Again, this is all Easter morning, 1941. Don't you love it? I mean, point of sisters, eat your heart out. Yes, you can, can. Why don't you, if you want it? Yes, you can, can. I know we can make it. I know we can make it if we try. Okay. And I got another one that I forgot to add, but here goes. Take a look at this one. Oh, there we go. Look at there. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't they beautiful? That's Easter. Now that's Easter right there. Easter Sunday. Right there on, um, um, actually, I don't know what street that is. But uh, yeah, that is very cool. Look at the size of those cars back in that day. Uh, Lisi D, thank you for one month's membership. Uh, Rohini says, oh, my God, I remember having to wear stockings with white frilly socks to church with gloves. Really? Okay. 
very ladylike, very ladylike. Okay, let me get rid of the Pointer Sisters here. And this kid right here, I don't know why I get the feeling that he grew up and his name was Jerry Butler. I don't know why I get the feeling that this kid went to church on Easter morning, 1941, and I don't know, got the spirit or whatever, and next thing you know, uh, he became Jerry Butler. <laughs> Uh, Kim Peter says, I remember wearing gloves uh, with a hat and my shoes match my little pocketbook bag. Uh, my grandmother would say, buy my coat. Oh, sweet. Uh, Brown girl, uh, member for 23 months. Happy Easter to you too as well. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Happy Easter. Yeah, I notice this kid is not wearing a necktie. I know he's not. I notice he's not wearing a necktie. But you know, before um, they said that before the John F. Kennedy administration, that regardless of your age or gender, most people wore a hat when they left the house. But after that, um, men stopped wearing hats in particular. Because John F. Kennedy, I think there's only one photo of him wearing a hat, and that was when he was inaugurated. He wore a morning suit. Yeah, he wore his morning coat. But other than that, John F. Kennedy, I don't think there's any photos of him wearing a hat. He just didn't like them. But you know, those Kennedys, they have some of the most lush, thick hair. Kennedy men have great hair, lush, thick wavy hair. I actually met one of those Kennedys before, and actually it was the one that got brought up on charges that time. And I, I'm going to tell you, I can see how he got in trouble. This guy, now mind you, on television, he's not so good looking, but in person, I think he had to be all of 6'3". He had these piercing blue eyes and amazing hair. And these ladies were just kind of, you know, all over him like a cheap suit. Don't ask me why. He just, something about those Kennedys. I think it's something about those Kennedys that kind of remind you of rabbits. <laughs> I think it's something about them that reminds you of rabbits. They tend to have large families, if you catch my drift. And right here is one of those church processions. Now, um, I got to tell you a little history about that community. Those homes were not built for black people. They were built for the upper middle class uh, white people. And occasionally there were mansions about the neighborhood. And um, the third floor of most of those homes, that is where the servants would live. Because, you know, back in that Downton Abbey day, a lot of those homes were built back in the 1880s and 90s. And um, over time, is with the Great Migration, more Blacks moved north. And, um, well, the Black community was bursting at the seams. And so uh, because there were so many Black people moving to the area and so many uh, factories in some areas that people just abandoned uh, their neighborhood, well, the white people, that is, um, the Marx Brothers used to live in that neighborhood. Uh, let me see. Mer Baron Mercedes, that's if, if that young man is you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I, I would remember that look, with especially uh, wearing a hat like that. I would remember that look. But I guess it could be me. It does kind of look like me. But uh, thank you so much for... Uh, let me know that, and thanks for the super chat. Now, uh, you guys, <clears throat> chickens and, of course, little chicks and, and rabbits, all of this reminds us <clears throat> of Halloween. I'm sorry, what am I saying, Halloween? Easter. Uh, the egg, 
is always reminiscent of a rebirth or life. And uh, there you go, resurrection. And so how it gets to the point where you got these well-armed chicks, I have no idea. Maybe those chicks are from Chicago. <laughs> Maybe those are Chicago chicks. Anyway, I love this picture. You know, I've had these for a long time. Um, and I've added captions to them over time, like ride or die. Now that's very Sussex squad. Say hello to my little friend, right? Say hello to my little friend. And of course, you just mess with the wrong chicks. You just mess with the wrong chicks. Okay. You about to find out. You just mess with the wrong chicks. And uh, let me see what else. Oh, you guys remember Archie's favorite book, Duck Rabbit. Well, at least it was. That was his favorite book, Duck Rabbit. Is it a duck or is it a rabbit? I can't tell. Duck Rabbit. That's that book that Archie hurled across the room that time. When he had had enough of it, he just hurled it across the room. Cute. No, I'm just kidding. He just, you know how kids like to drop stuff and see what happens when it hits the floor. I thought that was cute. <laughs> and then that look that Megan had when he dropped the book, she was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you know how they say, don't start talking about Kate Middleton. Otherwise, you're going to fall down the rabbit hole. Well, Bugs Bunny, one of the most enduring uh, characters in Warner Brother history, um, Bugs Bunny fell down the rabbit hole. Bugs Bunny, I know how ironic, right? Bugs Bunny has actually fallen into the rabbit hole. He has gone down the rabbit hole, and he should know better. And now he has insomnia. Now he cannot sleep because he started looking at all that Kate Middleton stuff on his phone, and now he can't stop seeing it. Now he can't stop seeing it. He can't stop hearing it. He has been up for days trying to figure out where is Kate Middleton. So when people tell you, don't fall down the rabbit hole, listen to them. Don't fall down the rabbit hole. Otherwise, you're going to be up all night. <sighs> A message from Catherine, the Princess of Wales. Uh-oh. The Princess of Wales announced she is receiving chemotherapy for cancer, huh? But uh, according to, uh, was it Getty? Uh now, you guys, I have not been able to substantiate this one, but this has been going around, so let me just warn you. I have not been able to find this on the actual Getty site. But if this is true, then that is a problem. That is a problem. Um, it, it's another one of those things letting you know that all is not what it appears to be. This handout clip was provided by a third-party organization that may not adhere to Getty Images. Editorial policy in this handout uh, video provided by Kensington Palace, Catherine the Princess of Wales speaks in a recorded personal video message providing an update to her health. Recorded on March 20th, 2024 in Windsor and aired on March the 22nd in London, England, the Princess of Wales had abdominal surgery earlier this year and has revealed that the cancer has subsequently been found. Um, let's see, she said she has been receiving chemotherapy and asked for privacy for her and her family. So if this is uh, true, and again, I haven't had a chance to substantiate this one, but if it is true, that's a problem. That is a problem. Because the whole idea of making that video was to make this stuff go away. 
So how is this happening yet again? Don't know. I don't know. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Although there is one reliable source that I can check just to make sure that it's real. As a journalist contacted Getty about, oh no, has the journalist contacted Getty about this? Okay, you know how I just figured it out. I, I just went to a very reliable person's page. And so far, it seems as though it is actually a real thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now that I look like look at it like this, I, it looks like it's the real thing. Wow. Well, not good. Not good. Well, I'll let the royal family worry about that. None of my business. Oh, but I'll make this my business. Let's get on over with it. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's get this over with. And this, uh, okay, it says this is a 2007 launch party at the at a Chelsea club for a documentary called Rabbit Fever. Wow, this doesn't seem very Easter-like. Uh, and the rabbit in question, uh-oh. Oh, good grief. Well, who is that? Well, she looks familiar. Is that that one that everybody's been looking for? <laughs> I say with uh, irony, that rabbit looks very familiar. That five foot nine inch rabbit looks very familiar. Uh, let me see. Oh, my goodness. The uh, night Kate Middleton went to a very racy party in bunny ears. Well, who would write such a despicable thing? Who would be so low as to write something about the future queen consort? Lord Nappyhead and the Daily Fail. That's right. The ambiguously, um, what is that? The, the racially ambiguous um, owner of the Daily Mail. Well, it was his paper. It was his paper that, that wrote the article. They did it. They wrote about her. Oh, wow. I had no idea. I had no idea. I thought she was going to school to, to, to work at Jigsaw, right? How in the world did that happen? Oh, well. I'm, well, you know what they say. It's just one of those things from the past. All right. Well, I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to share this. I thought this was going to be something about Halloween. I'm sorry, Easter. I thought it was going to be something about Easter when I saw the rabbit ears. I'm like, oh, look at there. That lady is celebrating Easter. I had no idea that it was um, that it was Kitty. Oh, my goodness. I've. I've really stepped in at this time, haven't I? <laughs> I've really stepped in it. I really have found myself in a spot of bother. Uh-oh. Wait, did we have the coronation? Because, oh, it says here, cancel the coronation. Guess who's back? Oh, my goodness. That was... I wonder if anybody noticed that she had came back. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's Resurrection Lizzie. Ladies and gentlemen, Resurrection Lizzie. 1992 is a year that I shan't look back upon with undiluted pleasure. Or actually, it was 2022. <laughs> Is a year that I shan't look back upon with undiluted pleasure. Yes, it's Resurrection Lizzie. She's back with those big wood block shoes and that uh, typical black patent leather purse. She's back. Oh, Lizzie, not Lazarus. I, you're right, Church Nelly. Okay, that's the wrong person then. 
But if she is going to come back, I insist that if the queen is going to come back, she needs to come back to queen. If the queen is going to come back, she's going to have to come back to queen. Because I do believe that what we thought was the founder of the band Queen, Freddie Mercury, Queen was actually founded by Queen. Think about it. Think about it. Queen was actually founded by the Queen. That's where the name comes from. Yep, that's where the name comes from. Queen was founded by QE2. So, you guys, I know that um, the British tabloid media, they make up stuff. But for years, a lot of people assumed that it was actually Freddie Mercury that used to lead the band. But actually, it was uh, Queen Elizabeth II. And another one's down. Another one's down. Another one bites the dust. Hey, I'm going to get you too. Another one bites the dust. Hit it, Philip. Philip? Philip? <laughs> Mamma Mia! <laughs> you guys, I am just ruining Easter. I know. Easter is not supposed to be celebrated like this. But do me a favor. While you're here, please make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you let me see how many likes we got. Uh, how many likes we got? Mm. Oh, why can't I see it? Anyway, I'm just going to have to trust you guys. Make sure you hit the like button. Even if you're watching this on a device, um, that is how we get the algorithm going. You got to hit that like button. Oh, 672. That's it? There's 1,423 people in here. This is how we keep the lights on. You got to hit that like button. You know it's the end of the month, and they're, they're going to do their totos, so... Uh, we need as many likes as we can get. Uh, there you go. Now, that's more like it. If she's going to come back, we don't want to ha have the queen like uh, step out of a Rolling Stone entrance. It'd be better if the heavens opens up and she just steps through the door wearing those big wood blocky shoes and those support hose and um, pantyhose, that is. And, of course, a control top pantyhose rather yeah support that's that's what um that's what is required for the holiday so 1992 oh you guys guess what whenever you see our queens it is time to go and you know what i mean oh an hour and 10 minutes not bad not bad okay yeah i think i am through yeah that was it that was a lot of slides, 49 slides. But yeah, so thank you all very much. Thank you for watching Royal Sussex. And remember, hit that like button on the way out. Thank you, moderators, for keeping this a safe space. As always. Oh, where's my moderator slide? My mod squad. Where's my mod squad slide? I don't see it. Stars, they may shine. Uh -huh. Hey, girl, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I don't see my uh, mod squad thing. But anyway, uh, that's all, folks. That's all, folks. Oh, God. Ugh, what a monster.
Uh, thank you, Cookies and Cream. Cookies and Cream says, everyone, please continue to pray for the Sussexes, each other, and the world. Absolutely. Keep praying. Prayer does work. It does work. Speaking of which, how about this prayer? A prayer for justice. Um, no, not that one. That was for court. Uh, okay, I've done that one recently. Okay, uh, this is a Celtic prayer for the Sussexes. Circle them, Lord. Keep them within. Keep hatred out. Keep joy within. Keep fear out. Keep peace within. Keep worry out. Keep light within. Keep darkness out. May you stand in the circle with them today and always. Amen. Oh, that's beautiful. That was a prayer uh, for uh, Megan, Harry, Archie, Lilibet. Oh, that was, I, I should show you that one. But well, I'll show you another time. But yeah, I forgot I had that one. But that one is a, I've had that since October 8th. Very cool. All right. Well, that's it then. I am going to Ginger Avenger out of here. Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? But I'm not. Okay. All right. Um, uh, thank you, Reba Henderson. All right. Love you guys. Have a good night.